Where are we gonna go? Where are we gonna show? Where are we gonna show us that? It's been a long time since I've been on here doing a video, so I wanted, I, I needed to do, a, I needed to shave Poodle's face. Look at that. <laughs> Sorry, we're gonna be disturbed because everybody just ate and they're all complaining. So everybody has needs around here. So I was gonna um, shave my poodle's face and make him look like a poodle again. So I thought I would do a how to shave your poodle's face. So um, if you don't know me, I'm Karen Jones. I own Karen's Critters here in Shelton, Washington. And this is my own personal dog. His name is actually Maddox, but uh, I call him poodle all the time. So he has a couple different names. Some of them, not so nice. <laughs> Depends on the minute. Um, he's a pretty cool dog though. He uh, is the leader in my dryland team. So if you don't know what that is, make sure you YouTube it and um, look it up because it is super fun. Um, anyhow, I thought let's get started on this and shave his face and I'll show you all how to do this. So um, first of all, I guess I should let you know that uh, I am a certified master groomer. I've been doing this forever. So uh, I started when I was 16 and I turned 50 <laughs> in December. So uh, yeah, it seems like I've done, you know, a millions of this in my life. So uh, I've only been a groomer. Well, I've done lots of things in my life, but usually related with animals and always grooming. So um, let's get busy here and I'll show you what we're gonna do here. This will give you guys a really great, you know, for those of you who are have poodles at home and you want to upkeep your dogs in between grooming, you know, most most people that come to me, first thing they say is, gosh, the face grows out so fast. Well, it's not really just the face. It's the whole dog. But because the eyes are so important, um, and we're always focusing on the face. We just assume that it grows out faster in around the face than it does anywhere else. It's just not true. So a lot of us, you know, um, a lot of us pet parents just want to take care of our dogs in between coming to see their grammar and make it so that they can see. And so I thought I would just do a little, a little uh, short little video here. Sue, he's all clean and washed and dried. And that is a huge part of the whole process. You don't want to shave your dog's face at all when it's dirty. Um, you're going to want it scrubbed super good with dog shampoo. And you're going to want to, if you're going to want to do the top knot and all the rest of that grooming, you're going to want to invest in some tools. Okay. So <clears throat> you're going to want to get some sort of hypoallergenic tearless shampoo and you're gonna wanna scrub that face really good. You wanna make sure the eye boogers are all washed out of it in the tub and your dog is um, completely and totally dry. So if you have a poodle at home or a doodle or any of the fancy breeds that have the curly hair, come on, and even, you know, even your Shih Tzus and all that stuff. If you're gonna do this at home, you're gonna need to invest in some really good tools. So we're gonna go into detail on tools on another video. This one I think we'll just stick with the shaving the face. Um, the clippers that I have right now are walls. Uh, I think those are KM10s. Yes, KM10s. I love these clippers, but um, it really doesn't matter what you use. Um, there's many, many different kinds. The Andis are really good to get. Some people have uh, the Osters are okay you can use them too um, what's most important is your blade length for the face so most people use a 10 blade on the face and that's what I recommend that you all get most of these blades are interchangeable throughout the clipper different clippers so if you get a 10 blade or whatever clipper that you decide to get you want to start off with a 10 blade excuse me let me get my stuff here don't get your nose in front. Don't get your head in front of there too fast or too closely. It's not okay. All right, so without knocking this down, let me grab a couple of legs. So I'm gonna raise this up and get us ready to rumble. I 
got a new table. It's really big and it's electric. I kind of like it. There, it has its pros and its cons. I like the fact that it's electric, but um, I don't. I don't like it being so wide. Um, the dogs can run around the table. It's annoying. So. Um, in a perfect world, I would take this table and I would cut it in half and make it way smaller, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it as is. So, so now we got our pretty poodle. He's all clean. He's all floppy and he needs his face done because he's looking really fuzzy. And it's going to be a while before you head to your groomer. So, um, you're going to want to take your 10 blade, get it on your clipper, your clippers, first of all. Grooming is an art, so there is a right, <laughs> depending on who you're talking to, there's a right and a wrong way of doing this. But most of the time when you as a pet parent go out and take your dog into the groomer, um, each groomer will do it kind of the same, but a little different. So that's because this is an art. And uh, not everybody does it the same way. So my grooming this dog is how I do it. So, um, and hopefully you guys pick up a little something, something from it so that you're able to do this at home. Your clippers are like a pencil, okay? So your blades on this side and this side and this side and through the middle are your paintbrush, okay? So, um, most of your grooming for your dogs is based, not necessarily for the clean face, but a lot of this is all cylinder and circles works because your dog is square. So like if you go to your beautician, your hair and your face is round. So your dog is not round. Your dog is square. It's kind of long, el elongated. So a lot of this is angles for length and cylinders your your legs a cylinder um, there's a half circle here kind of um, but you got circles and squares on these guys so um, and some of this you know some of the grooming is also you're kind of not looking at it you're looking through it when you're grooming so um, but as far as shaving the face you're gonna be looking at it so I can just stay on cue and not get off and go on a different tangent, that would be great. So your poodle, if you take your poodle and you have his nose gently in your hand and he puts his nose up, that's perfect. So you're gonna take your finger and you're gonna run it down the jawline and you're gonna feel his throat, right? So it'll go, it'll go all the way across, all the way across, all the way down like that right so if his head is up and you do this you can kind of feel there's a bump Boop. so right underneath that bump usually is where I will stop on my pet dogs so with my blade so I and then I will also look at I'm gonna change this angle and see if I can't get this right so so we got here I wonder well this is going to be, this is a challenge. So, so we also got, we got it poodle. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> so you got the bump down here, right? So it comes down to the bump and then you got the base of the ear right here. So you're really looking at here to here. Hopefully that shows that. Okay, so I'll turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. So there's a big difference. There's a big difference um, doing it, teaching it, and then videoing it. So please bear with me. So go down, feel the bump, and then you're going to look to the base of your ear. Does that make sense? Bump, base of your ear. So there, it's kind of like that. Okay. All right. So also, uh, what you need to be aware of with, with your dog is to be careful of your wrinkles in your mouth. So the 10 blade normally doesn't cut dogs, but it can. So you need to be really careful about that. And you're gonna use this 
as a pencil lightly. And most of this shaving is going to be, you're going to use this edge or this edge, okay? On these guys. So where I start with this is I realize where it's gonna start down here and I see the base of the ear. Snow, quit. So I know this is gonna come down here and here. And then the next thing I'm gonna look at is where the bottom of the eye is to the top of the ear. Okay, sorry, stop. My Bashan likes to throw his, he likes to bury his food and he throws it all over the place. So, so we got corner of the eye to top of the ear to just a finger length under the, the, the throat to the bottom of the ear. So, and then from your corner of your eye to the top of the ear, if you take your comb, if you can't see it and it's new, you're gonna take your comb and you're gonna just envision a straight line from the corner of the eye to the top of the ear like that, okay? So, and then you got the whole inside of this ear. So what I will do is I will shave this whole inside of this off. Let's do that. I will take the edge of my blade and I will take off the inside of this ear like that, okay? So, and I'm gonna shave the inside of his ear pretty well, which is something I do on all of my dogs. So it used to be eons ago when I started doing this that everybody says, pull ear hair, pull ear hair, get it all out, don't leave any ear hair. And some of the vets still to this day are like, well, they're not pulling ear hair. Well, what all of us longtime groomers know is that sometimes when you pull this ear hair out, when there's not a problem, you can create problems. So this, this ear hair is sometimes deeply ingrained into the skin of the ear, deep down into the ear. And when you, ble when you pull that, it bleeds sometimes. So I don't do it unless the dog's ear is infected or I see something going on. I will make sure I shave the outside of this really good and I lighten up the inside of the ear so the air can get in there. And um, if I see a problem with the ear, I will send the owner to the vet. Um, but And the, the way to tell if your dog's got a problem is if it smells, it's really dark and it smells kind of musky, you got a problem with your ear. And then you need to go to the doctor. Okay, so uh, make sure when you're doing this also that you change out your 10 blades. So oh, I would have four or five 10 blades. So don't let them get hot. I also put my blades on a piece of marble or I have my bathtub here that's metal. So I, when my blade's in between, I can set them on top of the marble or on top of the metal of the tub and it cools them off. So. You'll want to make sure that you're going to want to feel them all the time. Make sure they don't get hot. They have ceramic blades. Um, I really like the ceramic blades. Of course, it's all your own personal um, preference. But um, I like them a lot. And they don't get hot super quick. So, But I'm kind of old school and I'm a little weird. So <laughs> just, you try them to decide for yourself. <laughs> so... So anyways, I'm going to pull this ear back. Now, this is really, really, really difficult because if you pull this top knot over and you go to shave this, you're going to have a hole in your line of your top knot and it's going to go way up here. <laughs> and that's not what you want to do. <laughs> so you want to... <laughs> You want to leave, you want to flip that ear back without distorting your skin on the face. Because if you distort the skin on the face, you're going to have a giant hole. Okay, so I'm going to flip this ear back without pulling the skin over. And I'm going to continue with the edge of my clippers. And then I'm going to go up and I'm going to fix that line from the corner of the eye to the top of the ear. I'm just going to set it there. 
Then I'm gonna let go of the ear and I'm gonna make sure the eye is flat so there's no, there's no um, folds, okay? You don't, you gotta be careful with the folds. And you're gonna take this edge of your clipper and you're gonna hold this kind of tight, right? And you're gonna gently go under the eye. Whoa. Okay, just like that. You see? Just like that. All right. And you're and you're when you're when you're grooming this, when you're using your blade, it's a very light. Like you're not everybody's been a dancer or anything, but the way I see it when I'm doing this is it's often dancing. So if you're leading your girl in the dance, you're not going yank and yank and yank. You're asking her to go around and you're slowly moving her around. So that's the same thing with this blade. You're asking it to cut. You're not yurking it in there. <laughs> so there's a... And you just got to find your own, um, your own. So when I'm holding my clippers, I'm actually just holding it with like three fingers because I'm using my wrist and I'm not holding it, okay? I'm going to grab a different blade because these blades are draining a little bit. I currently have five or six ten blades at all times sharp time to send them off again because some of them are starting to drag. So now that you got somewhat of your earlobe cleaned out and you got your line kind of clean, then I'm going to go in, see how I'm using just a couple fingers, and I'm going to lightly, it's got calyx and it's going all around, and I'm going to go underneath the calyx, back and forth, and I'm going to lightly flip my clippers up away from the dog's face, okay? Just to kind of lift it off of the skin. And I'm gonna bring it down over his nose. And I'm going to use, depending on where the cowlicks are, the curls go, I'm gonna go against the curls, okay? So now, now we're gonna go down from the corner of the ear. Remember this part right here? So since I got the cheek all off and the top knot is kind of lined up, I'm gonna go back and clean this eye up a little bit. You don't wanna leave, you want this hole underneath the eye to be clean, very clean. So now if you leave, if you leave a fuzzy at the end of your eye, your top knot your lines on your top knot are going, not going to be clean and pretty. You cannot leave fuzzies. You gotta clean an abrupt line from here to there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna find that bump again and find the bottom of the ear just like that. I'm gonna clean that all up to there. Just like that. I'm gonna lift his little head up now. This part of the neck, this part right here, a lot of poodles will irritate here. And I think it's because people use, there's, there's wrinkles here and people use too much uh, pressure with their blades. So what I do is, see if you can see these wrinkles. So <laughs> he's got two wrinkles here. So what I will do, oops, I just put my clippers in the blade here, the holder. So try and, so see the two wrinkles? So what I will do is I will lift him up and kind of flatten the wrinkles out, but I see where they're at, right? Then I will go this way. I will use this kind of, this side of the clipper and do this way. And then I will, go this way with it and I will clean out those wrinkles and then I'll bring this down here's his little bump just below that now I'm going to even up this side and I'm going to make an abrupt line from here to here 
So this all gets trimmed away eventually. Alrighty, so now we got, you know, it's looking pretty good. This is kind of messy. There's still some fuzz here, so I'm gonna go against the grain lightly and kind of lift the hair up with my blade. And I'm gonna go on the bottom of the jaw and over the nose. Lightly, so. Okay, so now I'm gonna go against, whenever I see like fuzzies, and it's longer in one spot than the other, I will go back and I will lightly pull it away from the skin. You don't wanna go ee and keep going. It's little tiny air lifts from the skin to lift that up off the skin. Okay, so I'm gonna change my blade out. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the lips. So, this part of the lip will roll in and under. So you gotta roll that out and then you gotta clean that completely, the top of the lip, okay? And it's the same thing. I'm gonna use the edge and I'm gonna gently go over it and I'm gonna be aware, like this tickles, this does not happen every single day to dogs. So if he's gonna bounce around a little bit or whatnot, I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna go with it. Good boy, good boy. And if you talk to him and say, oh, you did really good. Sometimes they'll relax a little bit more. It's okay. And then you can get it done better. So we still have a whole bunch of ring, this fuzz on the lips. So I'm gonna try and get it off with this. Cause I don't like that. All right, now we got, still kind of fuzzy. So I may go a little bit, if I was really being particular, I would go a little shorter with the 30 blade on that. But I don't recommend that uh, you guys do that, but that's just me. So now what we're gonna do is we have this big old wrinkle here and it's in the bottom lip. It's right behind your canine tooth, okay? Sometimes these dogs, if you do not clean this out, they will get yeast infections in that spot. So um, usually I will send the dog to the vet and if there's a big sore right in here, I will send the dog to the vet. The only way that sore will go away is if your dog has antibiotics. And it infuriates me when I send the dog to the vet for a, an infection like that and the vet says, well, there's nothing wrong with your dog. I'll be like, okay. So um, if you see a sore anywhere at all on your dog's face, please, please, please go to your vet. Do not self-diagnose it. Don't say your groomer said so. <laughs> But just go there and ask politely, could this be a yeast infection in my dog's lips? Because <laughs> it happens. I've seen it a lot. And I used to have Cocker Spaniels, so it's prominent in Cocker Spaniels. This same clean face kind of thing is the same for a Cocker Spaniel on your lips. Okay? So, these the bottom lip also has all these little bubbles on them. And depending on what kind of dog you have, if you hit those bubbles with your 10 blade, they will nick. So you gotta be really careful about the bubbles. You don't wanna hit those bubbles. So what I'll do is I'll pick my thumb in the dog's mouth. Poodle, you need your teeth cleaned, oh my God. All right, <laughs> and I will pull that lip back flat so that is, there's no more wrinkles. So I have to pull it all the way back. And I will take the edge of my clipper, easy, and I will slowly, easy, good job. So do you see that we didn't, I don't know if you can see it on there, but we still got some fuzzy in that crease. That fuzzy absolutely needs to come out of there. So we'll pull it back again. And we're gonna dig out that fuzzy just with the edge. So I'm, I'm only, I'm not using my clippers like this. I'm using it like that. Does that make sense? So like I'm only using this part of the clippers and I'm pulling it away from the dog's skin. And then I'm gonna clean over by the nose. Clean some more whiskers off. 
I might take his chin hairs off and he's gonna, no! Oh. And then I'm gonna clean off this button. Yay! Hey, 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 hey. Sorry guys. Boyfriend's outside driving around in the vehicle and everybody's gotta bark, so it's okay. So it's really distracting when you're trying to groom and things are going on around you, but that's part of the game. I mean, it's part of it. They're animals. So, so now I'm going to do in between the eyes. Ta-da! We got them halfway done. So this right here, there should be a V in between this eyes. And I'm not going to, like he, some of these guys have really bad cowlicks. So I usually will take it, the V, so you have your eye goes here and then there's a spot here, oh here. So you got, you have kind of an almond eye, right? So you got your corner of your eye and then you got right before the almond part, it kind of goes up and around. So right when it goes up, I will stop my V right before the top of that up. So once again, I take my clippers and I'll dig in a little bit there, that edge and a little bit there. And I kind of make myself a little V here. So there's actually kind of a, if you follow your finger up, it kind of comes to a stop and you'll want to be right there at that stop. So if you go up any more than that, you're going to have a Mickey Mouse looking thing and it's too far up. So, anyhow, so I hope that helps. I'm just going to show half of the face because it's the same thing on the other side. Quit. You know. Go back over it a little bit and kind of clean it up a little bit here and there. I still don't like this little fuzzy, but honestly, when he's running around my farm, no one's going to see that. Clean up the bottom of the lips. Life is good. So I hope that helps you out some. And um, you guys can practice that. It, all, it, it just takes practice, guys. So whenever you're learning something new, you're never like... Uh, a super a super at it <laughs> no matter what it is it just takes practice so enjoy your time with your dogs have a good time with them keep them clean um, keep them clean and healthy the hair out of their eyes and <laughs> I sometimes let it get away too <laughs> have a good night take care thanks for following um, be sure and subscribe I'm hoping to do a lot more videos with these guys in the future and do some adventures and maybe we'll do poodle feet next time. Thanks guys. Bye.